Let's talk first about the numbers. Uh, you came out with numbers that were a little better than expected. 153 versus the 152 the street was looking for. Revenue a little better than expected. Comps were better than expected. And it was the guidance for the full year that I think a lot of people are watching now, too. You're saying for the full year, $5.75 to $6.05 versus the street's expectations of $5.61. Um, and the stock is up pretty sharply on all of this news. What, what, what's happening in the company right now? Well, I think we're building on the plan we put in place two years ago. And I think you see that in our 2018 results. We talked about the fourth quarter being our best fourth quarter in over a decade. And it builds on a really strong year. So, you know, 5% comps for the full year, really strong market share growth across all of our categories. We continue to see great performance from both a store standpoint and a digital standpoint. And I think that's the important message. Both parts of our business performing well. In the fourth quarter, stores grew almost 3%. Mm -hmm. Digital is up over 30%. And we took market share across all of our categories. So a really good year for the team. But we expect 2019 to be even better. And that was part of our guidance today. You are, are meeting with uh, Wall Street analysts yes, right after here. It, and it was almost two years ago today that you were meeting with those analysts, and they did not like what they heard. You were talking about reinvesting in the stores, spending a lot to try and catch up in terms of distribution and competing with the likes of an Amazon. Um, what do you think the reception will be today? Is this a little bit of a victory lap? Well, we don't take victory laps, but I think today will be proof that the strategy we put in place is working, that the guest is responding well, that the investments in stores are driving store comps that, again, in the fourth quarter were some of the strongest we've seen in years. Our new small formats in places like New York being really well received. The investments we made in our own brands are driving market share gains in many important categories. But I think importantly, the investments we made in fulfillment are connecting with the consumer. They're taking advantage of ordering online and picking up in store. They're driving into our parking lots. They're ship shoppers now, taking advantage of same day delivery. So all those elements are coming together. And we talked about this a few months ago. Mm -hmm. Our goal is to make Target America's easiest place to shop. And I think that's starting to happen. So we feel great about the progress. The investments we've made in our stores, our brands, and importantly in our team have paid off. And I think we saw that in our full year 2018 results, but more importantly, the guidance for next year, where we said, this is going to continue. We'll deliver you know, low single digit comps in 2019. Operating income, which everyone's focused on, we said, you're going to see margin stability, and operating income will grow in the mid single digits, and at the same time, high single digit EPS growth in 2019. So all the key measures are coming together. It's taken some time, but those investments we made are now delivering really good returns for our investors. Brian, for the holiday, which is November and December, yes. comps were up 5.7 percent, up 5.3 percent for the full quarter with January. We know that's a not not a holiday month. Mm -hmm. There's a calendar shift in there. But in general, are you seeing any cadence change in the likes of traffic or sales? Are you seeing any weakness? Because those government numbers really threw a lot of us for a loop in December, and then we've heard from some other retailers that January's been a little spotty too. In Courtney, in Q4. Traffic grew by 4.5%. So that overall comp increase of 5.3, it was driven by traffic. You know, more guests in our stores, visiting our sites. And we saw really consistent performance in November, December, and again in January. I mean, it was just a few weeks ago when we announced our 5.7 results for November, December. We guided to a 5% comp for the full quarter. Well, we delivered a 5.3. And that was just continued strength traffic growth in January across all of our major businesses. So if this summer you were saying it was some of the healthiest consumer environment you've ever seen in your career, how would you gauge things now? How would you, you know, I think judge it's it? still a very stable consumer environment. Consumers are shopping. You're seeing strong consumer confidence still. And our outlook for next year is that we'll see consistent results across uh, 2019. So certainly we're going to watch it carefully and it's going to ebb and flow. But right now I think we're seeing a pretty consistent consumer environment. And that certainly showed up in our January results. Can you give us a preview of what you're going to tell the street today about the forward plan for Target? I know I'm very curious in Target Plus, the idea of a marketplace on Target.com, but a little different than the marketplaces we're seeing from a Walmart or an Amazon, because you're selecting the different brands and fulfillment could potentially be a little different from the other players. Yeah. And Courtney, here's the big headlines for today. The strategy that's been in place for the last couple of years will continue into 2019. We'll continue to invest in stores and remodel over 300 stores. We'll continue to open up new small formats in urban centers and on college campuses. We'll invest in our brands. 
We'll continue to scale and mature our fulfillment capabilities, and we'll continue to invest in our team. And the results will be even better in 2019 than they were in 2018. So no major changes. We'll continue to execute our plans, continue to scale and build a very durable financial model that's going to be sustainable for years to come. Let's talk about the oper operating margins, because there, there were some uh, estimates on the street that were higher than you came in with. Uh, you came in with 4.9%, which is consistent with what you'd seen the year before. I had seen uh, some estimates of as high as 5.4%. What was it that, that pressured some of the margins? You know, when, Becky, we've had the challenge of a 53rd week versus a 52nd week. There's some changes there. If you actually normalize the numbers, we feel really good about operating income performance in the fourth quarter. And that'll continue into 2019. So we feel like we're on a path to stabilize operating income margins, continue to start seeing operating income dollars grow. And all of the investments we're making are going to start to scale and we'll get leverage against that in 2019. You're, you're talking about the investments in terms of delivery uh, at home from the website or people picking up in the stores, those, Absolutely. those investments and, that you've made? And we look at fulfillment as our friend. The investments we're making in drive up and pick up one, the consumer really prefers that. It's really reliable, it's easy, it's convenient, and it's more profitable for us. So as we see that shift, and we saw that during the fourth quarter, and you've heard that from other retailers, mm -hmm. order online, pick up in store maturing, our drive up capabilities, well, one, it's preferred by the consumer, but importantly for us, it's more profitable. So that's going to really help our margins going forward. Uh, people are watching your margins not only for the fulfillment capabilities, but also because you hired 12,000 part-time employees, which is more than any other retailers for the holidays. And you've announced your own plans to move towards $15 minimum wage. Um, has that had any impact on your operating margins? You know, one, we hired over 120,000 seasonal team members in the fourth quarter. And I know there were some questions about could we do that, yeah. and we did. And I think that investment we've made in wage has made us an employer of choice. So we're seeing a great reaction to our offering. We're getting great response from team members. They recognize we're investing in their futures. And we're getting great responses from communities across the country because they know we're going to invest in our team. You know, Brian, I have a question about tariffs. I know previously before you had said that you were able to sort of use your levers in other categories. So if there was pressure in tariff in one category, you could balance it out in another area. If we end up rolling back tariffs as the U.S. and China go through these negotiations, could that be even better for Target? Or have you already balanced that out so we're not going to see material difference in the end? Yeah. Obviously, Courtney, we're all watching it really carefully. And it seems like it ebbs and flows every day. So. Certainly right now, we're hoping that there's going to be you know, certainly a change in the tariff discussion, and those will be minimized going forward. And if there is, that gives us an opportunity to continue to invest in our business going forward.